So thanks again to everyone for joining us. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Kevin Ward, one of the uh, support um, and sales geoscientists here at Petrosis in Glasgow. And it's my job to take you through this webinar, this short webinar, 15, 20 minutes um, or so, on printing and plotting in Petrosis. So some of you might have had a go at some of these options. Um, my job really is just to, to make sure that you're, you're aware of all of the options that are available to you um, and perhaps show you some tips and tricks that uh, you're not aware of. So a couple of housekeeping things um, to get started. Um, like I said, this webinar will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the webinar is being recorded, so we'll get the video on our website afterwards. And uh, uh, and yeah, I think that's um, I think that's as good to go. Okay, so the agenda for today then. I'm going to start with a very brief introduction. It's just a one-slide uh, intro to the webinar. Um, there's not really much, I guess, to, to show in PowerPoint. The main thing is getting into the software and actually showing you these uh, these options in practice. And so that's what we'll do in the second part, which is the live demo. I then got another slide just to uh, to let you know where you can get more information, when you where you can learn more about Petrosis. Um, and then that will be us. Then after that, I can take questions um, either in the the chat log if you want to type, um, if you don't have a microphone, um, and if you do have a microphone, I'll unmute everyone at the end and you can ask questions there. Okay, one slide just to get started then. So everything I'm talking about today is in the, the mapping module. So when you have created your, your map in Petrosis, you can click on the file menu. Now there's two options available to you, and it's these two options that I'll talk about today. Now traditionally, people would um, have selected the, the print option, and using the print option, you can obviously print off maps to a physical printer or a, a plotter. Now, more recently in Petrosis, um, within the last few years, we've started to work a lot on our export option because um, nowadays most maps are not printed to a physical printer or physical hard copy. Most maps are generated to be shown in, uh, in digital media, uh, things like PDFs um, or in PowerPoint presentations. And so if you go in the export menu, all of these options are available to you. And it's mainly this, uh, this option that I'll focus on for this webinar. Okay, so like I said, very short uh, PowerPoint slide just to get us um, int um, introduced to this topic. The main thing now is to jump into the, the software. Okay, so this is my Petrosis map that I'm going to use to show all of the printing and the exporting options. Now, before I actually get started, just a little aside, the reason I've selected this particular map is that this is my entry for this year's Petrus's Big Book of Maps. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with what that um, that is, but essentially it's a map book that we uh, we put together. We get a, a bunch of maps um, printed out, and we have a little kind of um, friendly competition between Petrus's staff and Petrus's clients. So if you do have a map, um, obviously it has to have a non-confidential data that we can publish but if you do have some uh, some data you want to create a map and you want to compete for the title of the this year's mapping guru then please do send us uh, your maps more than happy to put them into that book um, and like i say it's just a bit of friendly competition so uh, yeah that's a short thing about the map book let me jump into the the actual webinar then so the first thing i'm going to do with this map is i'm going to show you how we would print this out to a physical hard copy now to do that we use the file menu and we select the print option down here. Now there's two tabs at the top here. You can select the page as graphics drivers, and in here you find there's things like TIFFs and JPEGs and CGMs. Now this option is the, the older option. Um, some people have, have used this in the past, and so if you do have specific reasons for using this option, then fair enough, go ahead and use it. But what I would say is if you've never used this option before, then just ignore it because it is the, the older version of how we would create things like uh, JPEGs and PNGs. So assuming you haven't looked at that before, we can just ignore that, and we'll select the Windows uh, Printers option. Now in the Printers option, you can select from your existing printers in your, your office, or if you have particular graphics drivers um, that your, your site needs you to use, um, then you can use these from here. You can also select things like the number of copies, and you can select things like um, paper size and orientation. Now the good thing about um, this window, and like we'll see some of the other windows, is that you get this little preview, so you can see exactly what it is you're you're doing. So you can change your paper size um, to different sizes. So we can make this A3, for example. We can change the orientation, so we can make that uh, landscape, 
and you can change alignment so you can center it or you can have it the map over on the left hand side and um, you can increase or decrease the, the margin width and you can also change the resolution as well um, so a lot of options in there to to really get your map looking exactly how you want it the one of the important options down the bottom is this fit to page option if you have that toggled off then the, the map will just be printed to the exact um, true scale that it is um, obviously you can see that this paper size A3 would only print out a small section of the map. Also, if I select something like A4, then it would be a, an even smaller section of the map that would be printed out at that scale. If I toggle on fit to page, it will then just adjust the scale to, to fit exactly onto that paper size. Now, at this stage, you just click OK, and then obviously that map would print out. Um, obviously, for the purposes of um, a webinar, that's not really going to show you very much, so I'll just skip over that um, and move on to the next part of the webinar, which is the, the focus of this demo. And that is the export options. Now there are a range of different options in here, and I'm going to use each of them. So because I'm going to use these options regularly, I'm just going to click on the top of this um, panel. I'm just going to create a little tear off menu here. Now, just a little tip, I guess, for you: you could have this on a separate screen. If you were constantly pushing things to PDF, then you don't want to have to keep going into the file menu to get it. So you could have this little tear off menu and just select that um, each time. So got this little tear off menu. And what I'm going to do for this webinar is work from the bottom up to the top. So I'm going to start with the, the option down the bottom, which is to publish the map to a WMS. So if I click on that option, you get this little panel here. Now, for those of you that don't know, the WMS stands for a web map service, and it's a way of sharing maps over um, an, an intranet or an internet um, system. Now, other software, things like, um, like ArtMap, things like Betrayal, there'll be the others as well, support um, the display of WMS data. So the advantage of using this tool is that you can easily um, view your maps on other applications like ArtMap, like Betrayal, um, via the, the WMS system. So to, um, to export your maps to, to WMS, you'd select this system. You then um, select this Configure button, and there's nine steps that this goes through to actually set this up. Now, it takes maybe five to ten minutes to set up. So not particularly long, but um, I'm not going to go through each of those steps in this short webinar. Uh, another thing to point out is we do have a very helpful how-to PowerPoint document that goes through each of these steps with some screenshots and talks you through them. Um, so if you do want to do this, then let us know and we can uh, we can explain that in a little more detail. So I've done this before, um, before starting this webinar, and it's created this WMS link here. So when you've exported your map to WMS, what you can do then obviously is display the WMS. Now if I just then um, clear the, the data on the map here, you can display WMSs in Petrasys, whether they're Petrasys WMSs or um, external ones. So click on the, the web map service option. And just to show you this works, I'll just display this WMS here. Now in reality, you probably would not display a Petrasys WMS inside Petrasys. You would display it in other things like Betrayal or, or ArtMap. But just for the purposes of demo, just to show you, there you go. I now have my WMS available to be displayed. Okay, I will jump back to my uh, to my map and continue with uh, with the rest of this export panel. So the next thing on the list then is the the ability to do to ex <coughs> excuse me export your maps to uh, to a Google Earth format to KML format. So if I click on this option here. You'll see all we need to do here is type in a name for the, the Google Earth. So I'll just call this example map. Now you'll notice that the only CRS I can have is WGS84, and that's because Google Earth can only um, display data in WGS84. If your map is in a different coordinate reference system, then Petrasys will do that datum conversion for you um, using your preferences to do the, the datum conversion. I'll toggle on a couple options down the bottom, so I'll include the style information and any text that I have, so this text here, for example, will be converted to a polygon to be used in this KML format. So I'll click OK. Now this option is reasonably performant, so um, you can see that it only took a few seconds to export this, but it's exported almost 2,000 lines and almost 1,700 polygons, so it exports a high amount of spatial data in a very short time. When I've done that, I then have um, a file in a KML format, and I'll open this up in Google Earth just to, to show you on here. <clears throat> Close that. So you see we're zooming around uh, Google Earth into the uh, Kazakhstan area to show you where all my data are. 
and you can see this is the result. So obviously I could give this KML to somebody who doesn't have technical software that perhaps uses Google Earth um, that wants to see whereabouts I'm working or wants to see my data. And also all the layers are retained. So for example, the person could come in and view all of the, the faults in my area. They could also view where all the wells are um, or any of the other license blocks, any other information that's on here. So a very easy way of sharing your, your maps. You'll notice that it doesn't have any of the colour information, and that's just a limitation of Google Earth. But all of the, the lines and polygons um, and text is all retained um, for, uh, for Google Earth. So that's the, the spatial data option. The next option is the PowerPoint option. And this is a, um, an option that's been added within the last couple of years um, that uh, has proved to be very popular. We, we hear more and more that a number of our uh, users are actually, they describe themselves as PowerPoint jockeys. They, they essentially use PowerPoint day in, day out to create um, presentations or to create um, files or portfolios of all of their, uh, their geological information. So they use PowerPoint regularly and this option here really does help them uh, do this much quicker. Now you see there's some icons there. Um, so let me show you where we can uh, save these, these shortcut icons. Up on this, um, this panel here, you'll see there's a, um, some icons up here. And if I right click, you'll see I get a list of all of the, the toolbars that are available to me. Now I can toggle off the export toolbar and I can just toggle that back on there. And that just displays here. Now this toolbar has the, um, the ability to save files to, uh, to raster images. So that's the raster image option. There's the PDF option, which is up the top. And then you've got your two PowerPoint options. Now there's a detailed export to PowerPoint, which I'll go into in a few minutes. And there's also the, the short, quick export, um, just using the, the screen resolution. So if I click on that icon there, what you'll find is that back in my PowerPoint, so this is the, the PowerPoint that I used um, earlier on just to, to start this webinar, you'll see that um, I now have my map in this, uh, uh, in this PowerPoint here. And I can do things like obviously resize it and put it to various places. Um, however, there's a more advanced option, that's what I'll go into just now. The more advanced option is really for the people that use PowerPoint on a regular basis to generate um, these, uh, these presentations filled with their, their maps and their data. Um, now, there's a couple of different options in there. One is that you can set exactly where on the slide you want the map to go. The second thing is you can, uh, you can have the, the, uh, a zoomed area of your map. You don't have to have the full map. And you can also choose the resolution. So I'll go into those options just now. So if I go to the, uh, the view menu and go to the slide master, you find that we have these things called uh, placeholders within PowerPoint. Now, if I find the slide I was working on earlier, which is this one, I've inserted a picture placeholder. So I've gone to this menu and I've selected insert picture placeholder. And I can choose exactly where on this slide I want my picture to be. So I'll put it down the bottom right there. And if I go back to my, a, my PowerPoint presentation, and let's say I added a new slide here, if I choose the layout of that slide, and I'll choose it to be the, the, uh, the, slide, the slide from the master slides that I selected earlier, I can now go back to my Petrus's map, and I can uh, zoom into a particular area. So let's say I, I zoom into this area up on the top right here. Now, if I choose the more detailed option, which is uh, this one here, or I could go to PowerPoint and choose this bottom option here, I'll get this little window here that has a few things um, uh, to help me out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the resolution of the, the export. So I'm going to make it a medium resolution. You can go um, up to 600 DPI if you want. And the other thing is I'm going to say that I want the current view rather than the entire map. I click OK to that. I find that back in my PowerPoint presentation, that particular part of the map is now displayed and it's in the bottom right hand corner um, of the map. So you can imagine if you have if you have to create 20 of these, you can now very easily go back to your map, zoom across a bit, select this icon, and everything's all remembered for you. So it's um, the medium resolution and the current view. And if I if I had to create um, a new slide or if I have a new slide ready, then I can easily just push that um, into that uh, that new slide um, just by clicking OK. So very easy to create these, um, these uh, PowerPoint presentations using this option. Okay, the next option on the list then is the, the raster image option. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on this option, but just to, uh, to show you a couple of things that are in here. There's various different formats you can get your, your maps out in. 
So BMPs, ECWs, GeoTIFFs, JPEG 2000. So if you need uh, geo-referenced uh, uh, images or geo-referenced files of the, the maps, you can have these options. There's JPEGs, PNGs, PPMs, and also TIFFs. When you select that, just simply give it uh, give the file a name, and you can choose in pixels the width and the height of your your map. You can also choose the DPI um, as well. You'll notice if you create the DPI too high, you get this little orange box to tell you that you're using a lot of memory um, as well. So it tells you how much memory is required to generate that um, that image. You've also got similar options to the PowerPoint, so you can choose the current view or you can choose the entire map. And you can also choose um, georeferencing options for the georeferenced uh, formats. So if you're using this file for a particular application and that, that application needs particular georeferencing types or compression types, you can play about with those parameters there. When you click OK, the map is then generated in that format. You can see it's opened up here in Windows Photo Viewer. Um, you can open it up in anything that supports GeoTIFFs. Um, and so the value here is this is a very easy way to share digital uh, formats of your of your maps. The next file on the or the next option on the list here is the pick file. And if you click on this, you'll see there's just two options here. There's, you can either export the zoomed area or the full picture to a pick file. Now, if I choose one of these options, you'll see that it then uh, opens up the window here. And basically, all I have to do is type in a name and click save. You'll notice that this is called a Petrus's pick file. So this is a, a proprietary format that Petrus has. Um, to be honest, it's a, it's a format that um, that's perhaps a little um, outdated now. It's used for things like um, our location map images. So various parts of the Petrus software will ask you for this pick file. Um, but in terms of sharing with other applications and with um, people who don't use Petrus, it's probably not a file that you'll use um, too often. Next on the list is the CGM file. And again, you get similar options to the, the pick file. So in this case, I'll choose the full picture. And you'll see, again, you get to choose the name and location for the CGM file. So if you are using things like um, Easy Copy or other things that need a CGM file, you can use this, um, this option. And the final um, option on the list is the PDF option. And again, it's a reasonably new option within the last few years. And it's proved to be very popular. So I'll go into this option in a little more detail. So again, you get to choose the name of the PDF and you get to choose the, the paper size. But obviously, if you're wanting to fit the map onto the paper, then the actual paper size doesn't matter. So you can play about with them um, with the paper size in here. You can also choose uh, the orientation um, and you can choose uh, the margin width um, as well and the DPI. So similar to the print option, you've got some, uh, some options in there to, to change the, the preview window. You've also got similar options to the PowerPoint, so current view and entire map. And you've got the ability to, um, to use georeferencing information and layers. And this is the real key thing about our PDFs. They retain the georeferencing information and they retain the layers. So if I click OK to that, you find it now opens up um, in a, a PDF. So in this case, just I'm just using Adobe Reader. So no, no technical software now. Um, and if I expand this option here, you'll find all of the layers are retained. So I can easily toggle off things like, um, like this folder here. Um, I can toggle off some of the other folders as well. And so the advantage of using um, this option is that uh, I can give a whole suite of maps to somebody who doesn't have technical software, and they can very easily manipulate the view and see exactly what it is I want them to see. So, for example, you could give a portfolio of maps. You could give your, um, your top structure map, your base structure map, your net pay map, net to gross map, whatever it is. You could give these um, as a series of uh, folders. That person could then come in expand the folders, toggle on and off exactly what it is um, they want to see on their um, on their, Petrus's, in their uh, PDF. The other thing this does retain as well is most uh, PDF readers like Adobe Reader have a, a geospatial location tool. Um, so there it is there. And if you look down the bottom right of the map, you'll see the latitudes and longitudes are retained. So if I had to zoom in um, to some of these wells, I can easily see the, the coordinates of those wells um, on this PDF. So again, it's the ability to share your maps with people who don't um, use technical software, um, that's the advantage here. And that's the last of the, the options. So thanks very much for uh, for listening to this uh, this short webinar. I'll jump back and just going to finish with one slide just to show you where um, you can learn more information about Petrosis. So obviously there's our, our videos page on our website. Um, if you go there, you'll find um, this webinar very shortly. And you'll also find all of the previous webinars as well. If you want to see the upcoming webinars, there's um, there's a link to, to that there on the screen as well. 
The next upcoming webinar is all about, um, it's the second part of making maps um, using Esri data, and that's towards the end of April. If you want to receive some training and purchases, we have a training link on our website. We also have some online training as well. So if you want to, to learn purchases in your own time, at your own pace, there is an online course that you can take, um, and that's the link to it there. And finally, just one thing to mention is that we do have um, a support portal um, being developed at the moment, and that will be released to our maintain client shortly. So it'll have things like the ability to download um, to download uh, new versions of the software. It'll have things like um, the ability to view your outstanding support calls. And it'll also have um, a series of uh, helpful um, how-to documents. So the how-to document I talked about earlier for publishing maps in WMS, that will be in the portal as well as a range of other ones to suit various different workflows. So thanks very much for listening.